Ladies and gentlemen, here is the latest bulletin from the Intercontinental Radio News. Step into the This is Macabre Grimoire with Airy Show, Travis Nye, and Robert Maley. Hey everybody, welcome to Macabre Grimoire, Chapter 18. I'm your host, Airy Show, here with my co-host, Robert Mayling and Woo. Travis Nye. Hey. And today's episode, or chapter, we are talking about ghosts. All things ghosts and anything kind of crazy experiences. Um, I have a really crazy experience myself personally that I can't wait to share with all of you. And um, Rob has a dream that he wants me to interpret. So, with that... I was a kitty. (laughs) No, that's not... We'll get to it. (laughs) Okay. So, um... (laughs) You've been here a while. Yeah, I have. (laughs) Well, I guess I should mention, because the audio probably sounds a little different, we're actually recording this live at Supercon. Woo! Woo! So, um, that's kind of why things sound a little bit different. But um, we're... Yeah, we're going to have fun with this. We're going to see where this goes. So um, my ghost story actually starts at the first Supercon, which was when it was back at the Ramcota Best Western. And um, I was just starting out as a medium. And um, I was, it was the very last day of the con, and I was sharing a tape. I was running the Sioux Falls Zombie Walk table, and the person who was my partner that day, we were just sitting around talking, and then all of a sudden the top, I, I love ghosts, so the topic obviously came around to ghosts. And she's like... My house is so haunted, and I was like, tell me more, (laughs) because I'm just like, this, I need to know more, so she's like, I have, she's like, I was getting ready to come here, and then um, before I went into my closet, and I didn't even reach into the closet, and there were, my clothes were already swinging inside of the closet, and I was like, that's missed, ugh, and then she mentions about how they saw an orb, like, literally an orb of light fly through their house and go out into the yard, and I was like, "Ah, that's amazing, I'm so sorry you have to go through that, but that's so awesome, so because I'm a major geek for ghosts. So I was like, well, I'm a medium, and I could just come by your house and see what's going on and help you clear out the energy. And she was like, how much? And I was like, nothing, because it's my first one. (laughs) And she's like, sold. But I'm not liable for portals to hell in your bathroom. (laughs) Right. This is where I was the very first, uh, had just very, very first started out. So I was very new to all of this. And so... um, There were no survivors. (laughs) Unfortunately, my client didn't make it, no. Um, So we set up a date, and we set up a date several months later, and um, I... And I was supposed to come over to her house, and I took my—I was going to bring my recorder, I was going to bring my sage, I was going to—I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, but I really wanted to do an investigation, and I really wanted to um, help clear up the spirits. But if you're going to do a ghost hunt, never do a ghost hunt by yourself. Always make sure that you have people with you because you were it's, doing it by yourself. Yeah, because I'm an idiot, and I was really excited. Okay. <laughs> have you not seen a scary movie? I, okay, we make scary movies, I so know. yes. I, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But the woman usually is like the last one to go. This is true. So yeah. You had She's a got chance. a lot of plot I had a armor. Chance. I was final girl. So, um, I, so what I did is, um, I did some research on how to prepare myself for a ghost hunt and what to kind of expect on all levels. And one of the things was, um, if it's a negative energy, they will do anything that they can to stop you from going to the location. And, Oh, <laughs> we have some new friends. Um, and so with, um, so that can, that can range from you be driving to the location and all of a sudden you start to get physically sick. Your car breaks down on the way to the location. Um, you have crazy weird dreams that kind of try, they basically they're trying to scare you into not going to the location. Um, also there's a chance of getting possessed while you're on the location. I'm just like, Oh boy, I can't wait to go. Like I was, Oh, so naive. So, um, what I like to do is I like to do distance sessions. So, what I did, um, this was on, uh, so I was supposed to be there on Wednesday night. 
So on Sunday night, I'm like, I'm gonna do a distance session on her house and see what I can kind of tune into. Now, the only information I really had on her house was uh, that her father had passed away in the home. So like an idiot, I made assumptions. So I tune into her house and the first spirit that comes through is this male spirit and I, all I hear is, I'm not leaving. And I was like, whoa, dude, no one said anything about leaving. I'm just here to check things out, see who you are, what's going on, you know, no big deal. And he's, oh. So you talk to the ghosts, like I the did. PR agent? I It's like, no, buddy, <laughs> calm down. Boba, we're going to get this sorted out for you. We're all humans here. Oh. I did, I absolutely did. <laughs> and so he, um, so he was just like, oh, all right, well, I'm not leaving. I'm staying. I don't deserve to go, and I, I don't deserve to cross over. I'm staying. I'm like, okay, Val, whatever, but uh, let's listen. I'm coming over. I'm investigating you. Um, just tell me a little bit about, about yourself. This is the recorder that I'm bringing. Talk into it when I show up. Like, this is kind of what it looks like. I send them a mind message. So basically where I just visualize the device in my mind's eye, then they can kind of see it. And he was just like whatever, but I'm not leaving. I'm like, okay, fine. So then he gives me a download of all this information about him. And what a download is, is basically, I mean, like a computer, you just get all the information at once. So um, he told me that he was a father, that he had a, that he had a son and a daughter, and he just couldn't face his daughter ever again, and that he had a wife, and that he was just basically um, just not very happy, and um, he his words were he fucked up a lot in his life, and he doesn't deserve to cross over. And I was like, Please. No one's done so much bad in their life that they don't deserve to cross over. And he was like, you don't understand. I fucked up a lot. I don't deserve to cross over. I was, was like, Hitler? No, it gets okay. better. Okay. <laughs> it gets better. So I was like, I'm like, okay, dude, whatever. That's, that's fine. That's, that's your beef to kind of deal with, but I will see you on Wednesday. And he was just like, we'll see about that. And then that was kind of it. You made an appointment. Sorry, I, I'm just like, I've never heard this story before. You made an appointment with it? So he was just like, yeah. no, I got a dentist appointment. So can we Yeah, he's expecting me. He, okay. In my timeline, he is expecting me on Wednesday. Gotcha. Because time doesn't was exist he available, on there. Was or did he have anything going on? No, he was free. He was totally oh, free. Cool. Yeah, yeah, it worked out. I was really, really happy. So I get that, so I get that information from him. And um, the night before I'm supposed to go to my client's house to do the cleansing, I have the most fucked up dream that I have ever had. That's a good sign. Yeah, it was awesome, right? So I'm standing barefoot on a dirt road in front of the cathedral church here in town. That's a church that I grew up going to. And there is a demon standing over me, seething with rage. And for whatever reason, well, I kind of know, but my spirit guides would not let me look at this creature. Like I couldn't physically like even turn my head to like look at what this was. So I did the, the only thing I knew what to do was to go into the church and get a rosary. And the way that the church used to be set up when I was growing up is that the basement of the church, which there was a basement entrance right off the main street, um, there's a chapel. And in the back row of the chapel, there's like this little basket of rosaries. And I run into the church, I go to this basket of rosaries, and they have multicolored rosaries in there. And I'm debating, well, what color do I grab? <sighs> black or white, black or white, which is it? And then I was like, you know what, it doesn't matter. So I just grabbed them both, because for whatever reason, that meant something to me in my dream. So, because like black for grounding or white for purity and, cl and cleansing. So I, I grabbed them both and I ran back out into the road and I just, and I'm like standing there and I'm holding the rosaries up and I'm thinking, okay, I'm gonna do the exorcism prayer. And I couldn't think of it. And I was like, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna wing this. And I just go, the power of Christ will compel you. The power of Christ will compel you like over and over again. And, the, and then finally the energy dissipated and then it was gone. And then I wake up and I can still feel this entity standing over me, seething with rage. And I was just like, look, I don't care who you are or what you're doing here, but you will not intimidate me. I'm coming to this person. I'm coming to this house tomorrow and we will have a conversation and you are not in charge of me. I'm in charge of you. And you, and and you don't think that was sleep paralysis? <laughs> oh, I wasn't paralyzed. Okay. So then, um, then it dissipated because I didn't see anything. I just felt it. I feel like this is like a really cool like version of like Freddy Krueger when you just turn your back and he goes away. I'm like, I feel Freddy Krueger, and he's all like, Oh gosh, she got me again. <laughs> and he's like, Tomorrow, same time. <laughs> Foiled. Tomorrow, same time, Fred. <laughs> so then it dissipated. So now I'm kind of like, What am I messing with? I still kind of think it's her dad, right? So. 
go to the house the next day. Um, I bring my reporter with and I kind of do EVP session and there's a guy mowing his lawn. So I know I'm not going to get any kind of like good audio. I'm like, fuck you, dude. So then I go downstairs. She shows me the room where her dad passed away and I'm trying to feel the energy and I just don't feel the energy. And I was, and I hadn't told her yet about the dream or any of this experience prior to me coming. And I was like, so was your dad like a grumpy old man type? And she was like, no, nah, man, my dad was the coolest guy. He was so super chill. I'm like, oh, okay. But your parents, like her parents had gotten divorced and her mom got remarried. And, um, and he, the spirit had indicated to me that he was, um, divorced. And I was like, so was he like upset with your mom at all? And she's like, no. And she showed me pictures of her mom and dad still hanging out together post-divorce with her mom's new husband at like football games and picnics and parties. Like they're all BFFs. And I'm like, this makes no sense. Then I'm like, well then, okay. So I'm like, all right, listen, I got to tell you about my dream. So I sit down in the living room. I tell them about my dream and they're just like, whoa and now they're scared because they're just like that's intense and that's bad and then i'm like well who do you guys think it is and they go well maybe it's steve and i go whoa who's steve and they go that's steve and they point to an urn sitting on a shelf and i was like ah! <laughs> here's where it gets even more crazy so Steve um, was an angry guy, and this is a real person, so we have to keep that in mind that this is this is a, this is a real situation. Steve wasn't a very happy guy when he was alive, and um, he wasn't very happy in his marriage. And so he went to go meet his wife at work, and his wife served him with divorce papers. And since Steve doesn't deal with conflict very well, he ended up shooting and killing his wife, and then shooting and killing himself. So, and those ashes were in that, the house. Those ashes were in their house. Now <clears throat> they're like, well, I suppose it could be that vortex to hell in the pantry. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. That thing. So I was like, oh, well then. So um, what ended up happening is that a friend of theirs, this is their relative, and they didn't want to keep his ashes in their house, not because of what he did, because it's you know they have. It's, anyways, that's their situation, but because they didn't want to have to explain the ashes to the kids. I'm like, okay, I get it, whatever. So them, as friends, decided that, well, we'll, we'll keep them for you. Not, I don't think, fully realizing what they, they were taking on. Because um, I've encountered that when people are cremated, I, their spirits do cross over. It's just that they hang out, their energy is a lot stronger. So... Um, Anyways, they had his ashes in the house, and they're like, well, what do we do? I'm like, well, I just, I saved the shit out of Steve. And I just said, I don't care. Well, I'm like, I, like, I understand that you're going through something, but you going through all of this is disrupting everybody's life. So you need to work with this on a different plane where you're not disrupting everybody. And then um, I never heard from them after that. And there were no survivors. <laughs> and I was like, well, I wonder if, like, everything's okay in their house. Well... My friend, she also does the PR for the zombie walk. So six months later, I hear her on the radio talking about how she has a haunted house and how a friend came over and did some sage and now no more ghosts. And I was like, yes! <laughs> so I was like really excited that I um, helped with that situation. So that is my experience um, with ghosts. Well, I mean, I have other experiences, but that's my, that's my, uh, my first one. Um, that's first blood. Yeah, first blood. <laughs> The, um, so before you continue, though, yeah. at the very beginning, you said something about, like, ghosts are present, stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, you, you said something about, like, all the different feelings and stuff that you get. Um, so I remember, like, some of the weirdest things I've ever done uh, or, or felt just, like, driving down the road. Yeah. It's super weird just getting, like, that, I shouldn't be here, something bad's going to happen. Like, I should not be driving right now. And I get that a lot, and it freaks me out. I go through with it anyway. Yeah. I mean, I'm still here. You're right. But I'm like, why do you get that feeling? It's weird. Like, like stricken fear. Like, fear I've never felt before. Oh. I'm like, I should. And it's just simply, like, going home and after right. work. Sometimes, like, there could be energy. Not really, because that... now I go home at, like, noon. But <laughs> before, when it was late in the afternoon or evening. Right, 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 right. 
Well, I mean, sometimes like there, I mean, energy can be recorded into the environment around you. And sometimes if you are in the right frame of mind, so like when you get into an alpha state and like you have different uh, uh, brain waves that your brain gets into, you have, you have beta, which is awake. You have alpha, which is a relaxed state. You have theta, which is um, sleeping. Theta. And the theta. Theta. And then yep. delta house. And then delta, <laughs> which is where you are actually in um, dream. You're dreaming. It's like very, very deep sleep. And so usually when we're driving, we're actually very relaxed. And it's when we're in those relaxed states, like alpha, is when we can be very sensitive to things around us. So when I do the work that I do, I make sure that I meditate before I go into any of my sessions to make sure that I am connecting with that higher vibration because things... Um, that we can't see vibrate at a much higher rate than we do. And so in order for me to be able to communicate with spirit, I raise my, vibra my vibration by getting into the alpha. And so those feelings that you're experiencing is probably because you're relaxed enough to be perceptive, I believe receptive that. to that. So. I believe that. Well, thank so you. It's usually kind of like, I just want to be done with the day. And then right. I'm like, I'm at work and I'm like, whoa, now I'm home. So, I don't yeah. even want to drive. Yeah. We have somebody new at our table. We, we do. Say, <laughs> Ari, Ari, I don't want to freak you out. <laughs> There's sitting someone next to the behind you that wasn't there before. Yep. <laughs> I am real. <laughs> okay. So, sir, if you wouldn't mind identifying yourself for the podcast. Okay. Yeah, I'm Patrick Doyle, and I'm probably best known from the sci-fi show Ghost Mine, which is on for a couple seasons. Very good. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you for coming. Oh, for sure. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to yeah. sit next to you. Oh, cool. <laughs> So I, I kind of want to break a little bit from the story. No, so, no, no, for real. Just... Oh no, I'm done with my story. I'm yeah, good. exactly. Yeah. exactly. <laughs> uh, because just... we can just go on and tell stories all day. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I, this like, one time we... I grew corn, <laughs> and then you made it into a maze, and it became this whole Halloween thing. Anyways, tr continue. Okay. continue. Anyways, yeah. This yes. is why we don't just ramble and tell stories. Um, so I, how, I want to know if anybody here actually listens to the, the podcast. How many of you guys have actually heard the podcast before? It's okay. If yeah? You know, oh, you guys okay are awesome. No. <laughs> well, I actually like seeing no hands because this is a whole new audience for us, and this is why we do it. There you go. Yeah. So, so that's a positive. Put your hands up so maybe. bravo for coming and never hearing it before. <laughs> so I think we should actually you know, go in depth a little bit of like – our background and why we were involved on the podcast a little bit. Oh, yeah. And definitely, I mean, I, I want to hear more about you, so I want to, oh, I want to start with you, because you sound interesting, and we need, like, a big winner to start the show. <laughs> wow, no pressure. You need a big, sexy hook. So yeah, what, are you, what, are you, what are you asking from me? Yeah, how did so, you... like, uh, just, like, how about everything get started with you, like, the whole show and, like, your background everything and the inspiration. <laughs> and, um, Summarize your life in five minutes. Okay. The yeah, big, we only have an hour. The big man. bang of Patrick here. Uh, let's just go to the paranormal side then. Yeah. That's, awesome. that's the number one question everyone always likes to ask. It's like, how did you get started in the paranormal? And for me, it started at the age at seven, where I came face to face with a shadow figure who I now call Sam, which stands for Shadow of a Man. Um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Ghostly applause yes, from somewhere. From Sam. Uh, and being seven years old, you don't know anything about ghosts. It's like you're just learning how to tie your shoes. So when people say, I was seven years old and I knew all this stuff. No, you didn't. <laughs> you, were, you were playing with toys like I was. Uh, so when I was seven years old, I didn't know what ghosts were. I knew two things about ghosts. Scooby-Doo and Casper. <laughs> one had friendly in the title. And the other one, you rip the mask off and it's old Mr. Jenkins. <laughs> so when I came face to face with the shadow figure, uh, it was in... I was a latchkey kid, so I let myself in after, after school, plopped down and played video games until so my parents came home. So I heard noise coming from the basement, which was next to the TV. Uh, after a while, the noises got a little bit louder, so I went to the door. Thank you very much, sir. That's one of our sponsors. Please. That's a strange water. Uh, <laughs> okay. um, so I, after a while, I got up to see what the noise was, opened the door, looked down the stairs, and there's Sam staring up at me. No facial features, just a, mm -hmm. just a form, yep. shadow. But I could sense that he was smiling. At that point, instead of running away, I took a step down the stairs. And he was no longer smiling. So for about what felt like an eternity, which was probably only like five, ten mm -hmm. seconds, he turned and walked in the basement. I didn't think of anything else. I just closed the door, went back to my video games. First encounter. It didn't come up in my life until later on when I started hearing other people mm -hmm. who had stories. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh yeah, when I was a kid, I had this 
shadow that mm -hmm. I ran into. And that really got me into um, questioning everything about the paranormal. Because mm -hmm. I like to say that there are no stupid questions in the paranormal because we have no answers. And I come up with some stupid questions. <laughs> if, you, if you look at my blog on my website, I have a blog called What If? And it's just, just crazy out there questions about uh, what if ghosts are this? What if ghosts are that? What if there's a ghost? I'm seeing a person sitting in that chair right there, but no one else is, but I'm like you, sir. Like, <laughs> wonder if you were a ghost to me, but no one else could see. And I started talking to you and everyone's going, who's he talking to? <laughs> <laughs> but Pete, you're a ghost? You're <laughs> holding out on me. It's true, I am. Why didn't we lead with that? But that could be us in life, just walking through yeah. down the street. We could be running into ghosts daily mm -hmm. yeah. and not knowing it. Mm -hmm. So it's just those, I love well, that's hearing, terrifying. But I love hearing, no, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not really. Because <laughs> I've been touched and burned and stuff like that by spirits, but I've never been afraid of them. So. Yeah. And I just continue. That's, what, that's my continue. If I, my goal in the paranormal field is to get people to ask deeper questions. Yeah. Because I'm not satisfied with what people are seeing on TV and mimicking yeah, on mm -hmm. TV. Mm -hmm. So I ask the weird questions, not saying that the answer to this question is going to give us the answer to everything paranormal. It's the, I'm asking the weird questions so they might spark something in your brain. Go, right. okay, that's absurd. Right. But there was that one little point that kind of makes sense, and you think about that, and right. you come up with the question. Right. Next. So eventually we will find that answer to the question that we have. Right, so are you looking for more, I mean, so I, like I see, like there are some um, people who investigate um, paranormal occurrences or ghosts mm -hmm. um, as if it's like approaching it from like a scientific yeah. perspective. Mm -hmm. Like if it can be replicatable, mm -hmm. then I can prove that this is a ghost. But I have the, the mentality of, Ghosts are kind of like cats. They do what they want when they want, and oh, if yeah. the energy is right, yeah. like that. Yeah. So I believe that they are still there. It's just that's just not. Like, they just don't want to do it today. You know what yeah, I mean? Or exactly. the energy just isn't quite like that. So yeah. I guess. Yeah, and I use the term investigate because it's common. It's mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. But I hate the term investigate, and I hate the term hunting because mm -hmm. we're not. We're not. Imagine, do you want to be hunted and investigated? No. <laughs> so that's why when I go on investigation, I go into it as having a conversation like mm -hmm. we're having right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, was, I had a kid in my, like a young kid in my panel today, and he was going on his first ghost hunt. And he was asking me all these questions. I said, don't do what you see, because he said, oh, do I need to get all this gear? And I have this, oh. I have this ghost app on my phone. I said, delete that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And just go in, have fun, have a conversation. You already know the... the what you're going to be dealing with is going to be a little girl. Mm -hmm. um, do some research. Figure out maybe when that girl died. Figure out uh, what was the most popular music at that time. Were there movie, movies playing? What was the most popular movie? What kind of toys did she play with? Right. And go in there and just have a conversation with her. Mm -hmm. And don't even have to have a conversation. Have, like, we're having a oh, conversation. Oh, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Most of the time when I get the, the best evidence of paranormal, I just have a voice recorder in my pocket somewhere, and I'm talking just... Like we're having a conversation. Oh, yeah. We're just like, oh, this is a, a nice place. It's like, oh, did you go down the hall there? And a voice will come in to join in. Yeah, yeah. And join the conversation. And I feel those are the most uh, amazing um, encounters I've ever experienced. Right. So, like, most, do you feel like you get more interaction, like, when most parties involved are relaxed oh, yeah. versus being intense? Like, yeah. yeah. I see so many. I do paranormal conventions mm -hmm. and where you do an investigation right. at night and I see so many people huddled in a, in a little ball staring at their devices mm -hmm. and asking stupid questions sure. like like are you are you here with us yeah what's your name it's like why are you drilling me <laughs> I'm gonna go talk over to that cool guy in the corner who's just like, like uh, who's chill yeah, he's chill. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's another thing I say don't stare at your devices it's I see so many people doing an investigation here mm -hmm. they're gonna be so much stuff happening right here in front of them. They're right. sitting there going, uh, "What's your name?" Yeah, exactly. <laughs> waiting for that, like, waiting for that little blip. Of yeah, the yeah, light. yeah. Or, or the one they have, they have the, uh, they have that uh, ghost box app on their phone, mm -hmm. and their K two meter in the other hand, and they're wondering, you know, or they have, a, you know, a K two meter too with them, and they're wondering why the K two meter is going off with the uh. phone in the hand. I'm like. Dumbass. <laughs> because of your cell phone. You yeah. have not yet said it. Mm -hmm. yeah, like, I, I, I have very li limited equipment when I do investigation. Like my basic investigation. Right. Uh, voice recorder, flashlight. That's nice. it. Mm -hmm. 
It's like, that's all you really need. Right. I have the other stuff, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. mainly because sci-fi gave it to me, but nice. it's most of it's junk. It's, yeah. 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 it's uh, I, I, ma sure. I made a joke once, it's like, all it needs is a Fisher-Price logo and <laughs> yeah. sell it. And it'll be 50 bucks more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there right, you go. Right, right. That's another thing I really don't like about the paranormal field is just to go off topic a little bit, sure. that people, there are people out there rip off the paranormal enthusiasts or just the beginners, the, uh, the amateurs, with these outrageous priced. Yeah. There's a voice recorder that shows up on a, a television show that's worth two bucks and they're selling it for 100, 120 yeah. bucks. Mm -hmm. And the thing's a piece of crap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. it's, like, it's been proven to give false readings, but people are still paying 100 bucks for it. Well, can't you just use a recorder on your phone? That's why I do. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. And I've, yeah. got, and I've gotten EVPs off this this phone right here. Nice. I think nice. I have some on there right now. I have, yeah, I have a new one. <laughs> yeah, but I always have a voice recorder rolling whenever I go to certain locations. Nice, yeah. Well. And I'm not going there to investigate or... No. I'm just going in there to like check it out or... Yeah. Peruse, do whatever, the, and if something history, happens, yeah. it happens. Yeah. And if not, yeah, another day. Yeah. Yeah, sweet. Very cool. So, yeah. Well, then I guess we're going to, we'll do introduction. Do you want to continue with introduction or? Sure. Uh, <laughs> you, <coughs> I want to hear his drink, too. Yeah. Robert just became a man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah, well, I got to pick on you a little bit. Yeah, I, I, I deserve it. I deserve it all. Uh, <laughs> Heap your score. No. Uh, let's see. So what I, I'm telling specifically why I started a paranormal podcast is yeah. where, we're, where we're going? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I have always been a huge fan of, like, uh, when I was a kid, that's kind of what got me into history and why I picked up my, my degree in that. It's just uh, in high school reading stuff like Chariots of the Gods and, like, Who Really Built the Sphinx, Egypt Before the Pyramids, stuff like that. I'm super into, like, lost civilizations and aliens and just all sorts of like the fascinating like the knowledge and everything that's on the periphery and I grew up in a family that was super like into sci-fi so that really helps drive that uh, and then people know I'm also like a Twilight Zone nut and uh, but I love like the real like the I love I'm very I approach it very skeptically but I want it to be real and I think that's why I interrogate it so hard is because I really want to find that like piece of magic in the universe out there, but I'm like, ah, uh, I see, yeah, yeah, and he's a magician. <laughs> he's a magician, oh, so that's why okay. it's, yeah. And uh, yeah, I just want to find that like real piece of magic, but I don't want to be fooled by something along the way. So it's like I interrogate a lot of, <laughs> lot of stuff. You fool me all the time. You, you're you're <laughs> fine. You're you're set. All right. Fair uh, so yeah, and then I, I'm always a bit of. Like, I've kind of really gotten back into it recently, because uh, I kind of hadn't done much with it for a while, but then uh, last podcast on the left really got me into a super kick with uh, the sci with the, like, alien encounters and the paranormal, like, the history of the people that study the paranormal, which is, like, just as fascinating as the paranormal sometimes. Uh, so that's a great podcast. Uh, super unserious, but also, like, good research along the way. Um, so... Yeah, I was just like, I want to do something like that. And I've always liked, like, Coast to Coast AM and stuff like that. And uh, so this was this is my attempt at uh, that same kind of format, and I'm really enjoying it so far. I'm actually getting to brush off my history major and use it for something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Besides as a, like, placemat for all my programming that actually pays the bills. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's me in a nutshell with the paranormal. Very cool. Uh, yeah, so obviously I'm a magician. Um, what? I yeah, can you believe that? It's true, I do exist. I am here. Nice. Uh, so, kind of what intrigues me is what you started out saying, like mm -hmm. the first time you seen Sam. Yes. Uh, it was, instead of turning and walking away, you walked toward it. Yes. Okay. Uh, so that's kind of the approach I take with magic. Uh, I've never, to my knowledge, I probably could have and was totally oblivious to it, I don't know. The paranormal side of things, I've never truly experienced anything like that that I can verify and confirm. However, uh, I love recreating those moments without being dead myself. Um, so I like creating that same thing because uh, from your guys' experience, w w when people experience that type of thing, it's it can sometimes be pretty emotional, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's happy or sad, and in the end you're just like energized and like, whoa, what happened? Mm -hmm. That for me is exactly why I do what I do. Because I remember the first time that I seen a magic trick when I was a kid, and I got to go up and help a magician at my elementary school, and that first feeling I had like, 
what was that? Like, that was my Sam. That is what I was excited about, and that's what I ran towards. And then being able to recreate that motion, that feeling that you really can't get anywhere else in magic and creating that impossible for just a moment, like, that's why I love what, doing what I do. So I'm kind of playing that ghost, that specter, whatever, um, recreating those feelings, creating the impossible, something that you really don't know or understand. But everything I do has an explanation. I have no problem revealing that to you. I don't think you guys are fools or and it's all sleight of hand. It's fun trickery, stuff like that. But I love doing that because I love hearing these types of stories that I've never heard before. And in my head, one, it gives me inspiration for possibly a new theatrical piece or story to do. But one, as soon as I hear these stories, like how can I recreate that on stage live in person? And so that's that's why I'm a part of this, because I love hearing it, not to argue about it, call it fake, call it real, anything like that. I, I, I love the mystery behind it, and that's that's 100% why I do what I do, and I love being a part of this group here. So nice. Yeah, so that's basically me and what I do in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. For me, I'm just really, really into like the weird and like the crazy, the creepy, the like true crime stories, um, paranormal. And but most specifically, I'm a psychic and I'm a medium. But I'm also, I'm also skeptical of what I do. So sometimes whenever I have a situation and like I'm doing a reading, I'm always very, sometimes I'm like, no, that's not real. And the client's like, yeah, it is. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. <laughs> like sometimes it feels like bullshit to me, but it's, it rings true for them. So, but, um, so, but primarily like I like bizarre States is like one of my favorite podcasts and that's on the Nerdist network. And, um, I listen to that constantly. And then, Rob asked, like, hey, do you want to be part of a paranormal podcast? And I'm like, would it be unprofessional to say fuck yes? <laughs> and he's like, that not at all. That was the actual question, like, <laughs> response on Messenger. You want to hear chip coffee during gallery readings. Every other word yep. is a curse. Yeah, and my mentor, Carmel, she swears too. And she's like, spiritual people don't have to be, like, all holier than thou. Spiritual people can swear because we're human too. So I was like, all right, that's fine. So, so yeah, so that's kind of why I got involved because I love this topic of just all of it, and then uh, also of what I like to of what I do. So, so yeah, so back to you. Oh, back to me. Yeah. <laughs> that's the way. Okay, so um, it could be either prior to the show or while you're while you've done this done, done your show. Is your show still currently going? I'm sorry, I don't. Have, no, it's not. Okay, I didn't do a ton it's of still, research. I didn't know you were like, gonna be here. <laughs> it's in uh, reruns on okay. Destination America, yeah. but. We're not currently filming, no. Okay. Um, so what was the most impactful experience that you've ever had? Like, the one that you love to tell. Like, when people are like, tell me a good story. And you're like, Oh, about right. Ghost Mine, yeah. Or, yeah, or Ghost Mine or anything, really. So much happened in Ghost Mine. Because there's the stuff that people saw on the air. Yes. The stuff that got cut out of the show that yep. I was on the phone, like, two seconds after yeah. watching the episode yeah. saying, why isn't it on the show? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, shit. You don't get to sit on the, on the editing? No. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> 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 That's terrible. We finished filming. They send us home, and three months later, we see it on TV. You got a finished product. Yeah. Yeah. You have no idea what. Like no that. idea. Wow. And I'm watching it because, of course, there's two camera crews: one filming the miners, one filming us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I yeah. wanted. To, I was watching for. I knew what I did. Oh yeah. I just want to see what the miners yeah. are doing yeah. and see how we are, we crossed paths. Yeah. But yeah, there's like, like it's like you didn't show that EVP, and he's like, yeah, I didn't make the cut. But it was so genuine, so clear. Yes. It's like, yeah, sorry. Um, but to get to your question, um, the one that did air, partially air, sure. uh, was in the dredge, um, I think it was season two, no mm -hmm. one blends together, uh, in the dredge, and that's just that big wooden machine that floats in the water, and it basically scoops the rocks out from, the, from the water, processes it inside and kicks out the, the bad stuff they don't want out the back. Sure. It was run by, back in the day it would be run by three people, one working up at the gear room, one working down in these giant massive gears, and then another guy who was just kind of making sure everything was running smooth. Mm -hmm. uh, many people died in there, so we were doing an investigation in what they called the break area, where right. we knew a guy had a heart attack. So we're doing an EVP session, me and Kristen, it was the... Uh, my, my partner on the show, mm. and it was a very small crew, so I think we had maybe, I don't think we had two cameras, I think we had one camera, so you have your one camera, one sound guy, and then the person who's basically running the show, making sure everything's running smooth, and then me and Kristen, so they got five of us on the stretch. Right. On this one area, doing the EVP session, really focused on the EVP session, um, and I'm hearing above us, doom, 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 like someone 
walking above. And I, I okay, okay, I gotta stop. It's like, who's upstairs? I mean, we're all right here. It's like, well, who was that? And it's like, no, I don't know. But let's just keep going. Okay, EVP session again. Are you here? Blah, blah, blah. Boom, 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 even louder. I said, okay, I'm gonna go take care of this right now. Go running up the stairs and uh, look down the hallway. And it's probably double the size of this room here. Look around the corner and there's a guy standing at the end. First, I think it's me. So I, I do this. Oh, yeah, yeah, shadow, I do too, yeah. But he stands there staring at me. And I just kind of go, uh, is there anyone else on this dredge with us? And they said, no, we're all right here. Uh, there's a guy up here. <laughs> and that's when it cuts to the show, because they cut that out of the show. But the oh, part they yeah. kept on the show was me calling down to Kristen and going, uh, you hear Kristen say, did you say you see someone? I said, he's standing right in front of me. And of course, I was going up to like yell at somebody. So yeah, I wasn't carrying, yeah. I wasn't carrying a camera or any gear. No, of course not. So I go, get a camera up here now. And so they come around up the stairs. As soon as I say that, it turns and goes into the wall. Son of a bitch! <laughs> <laughs> and then to follow up that story, um, we came back another time. I don't know if it was the next day or next week. Um, we went in there with a thermal cam, mm -hmm. pointing the thermal cam in that same area, saying, okay, I saw you there. Um, I turned the cam, had the gear going. Oh, sure. Um, we saw you there. Can you make yourself presence known? After a while, the figure shows up on the thermal cam right where it was. Even the, the producer and the cameraman who were filming over me are just going, holy shit. <laughs> because there's nothing in front of us. Yeah. But then this, the camera guy goes, your camera's not on. The camera's not recording. Son of a bitch. I push record. We all said, we saw, uh, yeah. you hear the bloop, and you say record. But when the figure showed up, the camera shut off. So we didn't capture that it. That damn cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how fun is that performing, or, er, so I'm in my performing <laughs> mode. Uh, doing things like that with people who have no idea, who are literally just there as a camera crew or something like that. Like, are they, like... It's, on edge it, the whole time? It blows, like, because the sound guy would come up to me every once in a while and go, I just heard something. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, tell me what, what, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the ears, man. Because yeah. like, our cameraman, before, before he did our show, he was doing transfer, the Transformer movie. Oh, sure. That's, oh, why, yeah. that's why if you look at Ghost Mine, it doesn't look like any other ghost show. It looks like a freaking movie. Yeah. Because yeah, sure. we had the guy from Transformers nice. filming it. So everything that he saw was blowing him away. Yeah. <laughs> but awesome. the, yeah, the sound guy was just like, I just look in his face and he just kind of go, <laughs> just shake his head with wide eyes for the nice. people listening. And yeah, you just, I'd say, what'd you hear? He says, I just heard someone whispering. <laughs> I don't know, we don't know it wasn't any of you. Because he's hearing everything. Oh, Cause nice. those mics pick up. It's a little- every, The task cam mic or is it? It's just a little love mic. Sure, sure. So it's like right here. Mm -hmm. You can see him on everyone on TV. That's, it pinches their shirt right there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I'm, I'm curious, why mines? Why mines? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That wasn't even my idea. That okay. was, uh, I got called in to do it. And it was uh, by random chance. It's like that whole thing, it's all about who you know. Mm -hmm. That's what this was. Um, Sci-Fi had bought this, the show from a, a guy who came up with the show mm -hmm. uh, and the production company. Sci-Fi owned the show whole, like completely. Yep. Mm -hmm. They bought it just off the premise. Right. Yep. Like, my, ghost in a mine, sold. Um, they, ca they did the casting of the, uh, the miners, and they had that solidified, but they couldn't find any investigators willing to go no, into a mine sure. because there's so many issues. Can you survive in the wild for long periods of time? Do you mind living in a cabin with no television, no internet for three months? Uh, do you want to go into a mine where sometimes you're crawling through a three foot by Ooh. three foot hole? Oh, yeah. uh, do you mind being 8,000 foot up in elevation, a mile deep under underground for hours at a time yeah. <laughs> and can you investigate the paranormal yeah. <laughs> of course of course so, so this, close this so are they a unicorn yes yeah okay. and they were having the hardest they couldn't find anybody um they went through a, a whole list of people and i i think they talked to somebody and said do we know anybody and my name just got floated out there oh uh, because i was kind of known as a wilderness guy and i had a, a very popular youtube channel at the time mm -hmm. called haunted hoax so they threw my name out there. Uh, Sci-Fi asked us to see tape of me, sent him that, and they said, okay, we like his look. They, they flew me down to LA for a meeting. Um, that's where I met Kristen, and, and then we uh, did some investigations. Nice. 
and they said, okay, you guys are awesome. Come on the show. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> um, I saw one episode of Ghost Mine, and the episode I saw, like the location you guys had to get to, you had to get to it by boat. Yeah. And it was Hell's Canyon. Yeah. So. Uh, that was fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> was, that, was that the only like? So then you were there though. Like once you were there, like you had to be there for like. Oh yeah. They a dropped, while. They dropped yeah. us off. Yeah. So it's like, of course, the cameraman, and the sound guy were there. Of but, course, yeah. Because you can't break that fourth wall though. <laughs> no, <you can't. laughs> Like, no, it's just me and Kristen the whole time. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's <the> cameraman. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, they said, "Okay, here you go, plop," and then enjoy your time. Right now, I can't. I, I'm trying to. Re- I don't recall a whole lot about like the show, but it, like, is it like you investigate different mines, or is it? It was one mine. Which is one of them? Okay, yeah, it okay. Was, it was the Crescent Mine, mm-hmm. but you call it one mine, but there's multiple tunnels oh, and sure. entrances. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So um, it just kept going too because the mine had been closed down for 80 some years and that was the big mystery okay it's like this if this mine is still producing gold why would it be closed for 80 years so something must be going on then we start hearing stories of the masons owned it oh there's native american presence here right um they tried to open it once but the miners got scared out where is this located sumter oregon okay which is 30 minutes outside baker city okay nice very small town. It no stoplights. It used to have two stop signs, but a drunk driver from the saloon <laughs> took down one of them while we were working there. <laughs> like the town I grew up in. <laughs> yeah. Elk, you'd walk walk home and there'd be like a family elk just walking the street. Like we had a joke that you could lay down in the middle of Main Street and actually take and get a full night's rest without even getting run over. Because <laughs> everyone just drove ATVs and you get trampled by elk before you get run over. By yeah, car. I bet. <laughs> Um, so then where are you originally from? Oh, all over. I'm a military family, but I oh, like, okay. I, okay. I, I, I call Washington, D.C. my home. Okay, yeah. yeah. I have cousins in that area, so okay. same. Yep. Same background, so. Okay. So then, let me think here. Do you guys have any questions? Does anybody have a question? Yeah, anybody have a question? Yeah. yeah. Let's open it up. So we got people now. How yeah. did being on TV change your way of investigating? So how did, I'm going to just repeat it for the recorder. How, how did being on TV change the way that you approach investigations now? Don't know if it, because when I investigate on TV, I investigate the way I do now. The great thing about our production team is they let us be us. Um, and if we had any problem with them directing us in any way, we just tell them no. Uh, and they listened to us. There are a couple of times where they wanted me to use certain devices. I said, no, I, don't, I won't use those devices. And they go, okay. So they were very cool with us doing that. Um, the only way that the investigation in the mine has changed my investigate, the way I investigate now was we had to rethink the way we investigate when we investigate a mine because it had never been done before, doing an investigation on a working gold mine. Uh, the lights, there are no lights. Right, yeah. <laughs> so the artificial lights play tricks with you mm-hmm. when it's bouncing off these wet rocks. We saw so many false shadows and uh, false movement happening just because of the way the light bounces. Uh, noises inside of a mine. It's amazing. You could be a mile deep in the earth and you could hear a diesel truck engine at, at, the, oh, at, wow. the, at, the, at the portal because the sound just travels. Did you know that going like? Going into yeah. that though? Oh, okay. So you're not like. Oh, we didn't. <laughs> like, what we, were your we were told. Curves? We were told that. Oh, okay. Because you'd be deep and you'd hear a noise and you'd go, that sounds like an engine. And you'd, you'd have to, someone run back and say, yeah, someone had their truck running. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, <laughs> but there are certain noises that you'd hear that made no sense. Like hearing pickaxes on rock. Okay, okay we don't use pickaxes. <laughs> right, <Yeah>. right. <laughs> <laughs> hearing men sing songs in the, in the back of the mine. It's like, oh, wow. and, like when it's like 3 o'clock in the morning. Nice. And well, we're not nice. <laughs> so so uh, I'm, I'm confident you didn't do this. Okay. But knowing that you were producing you know, content for a TV show, did you ever feel pressured to fabricate anything like pressured by those directors or producers or anything no. like that? No. And then, and the reason why is because the pod, the, uh, not podcast, the uh, YouTube channel I had called yeah. Haunted Hoax, uh-huh. my whole, the whole show was showing how people fake evidence. Okay. Very cool. And that's why Sci-Fi liked me because, okay, this guy's not, no bullshitter. Yeah. Okay. And I was very, I, the whole show, the whole Haunted Hoax was, 
I'd see a video on YouTube where someone said, this is a, you see him, I'm like, go, real ghost, yeah. 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 caught on camera. And as soon as I see it, I said, that's fishing line, and he's like, <laughs> he's like hiding over here. So I'd recreate them perfectly, mm -hmm. and then I'd show how it was done. Uh, Sci-fi loved that, so when it came to your questions, like, they never asked, and I never would, because, again, I, would, I wanted the show to be true yeah. to the field. And it would have been disservice to like, everybody, mm -hmm. everyone on the right. crew and everyone watching, if we were faking stuff, that, that's just not right. right. So, so what would be like your percentage of like hit or miss of actually finding something? Like, how often did you actually just go out there and not? Oh yeah, that happened all the time. <laughs> but that's investigating. That's, yeah. uh, that's doing this. Um, I use again. I use the word investigating even just because it's. Yeah, important. I get it. <laughs> um, that's you go into places all the time and you have nothing happen. That's why I love. I signed on to the show because they said. I said, well, is it gonna be like these popular shows? And they're like, no, you're gonna be at a location for three months. I said, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> because you don't get evidence, you don't capture stuff all the time during one night or even two nights. Yeah. But if you're there for three months, getting to know the place, getting to know the energies and the spirits that are there and them getting to know you, you have a better chance. And I think you, if you watch the show, because it is linear uh, storytelling, we do get more evidence as the show goes on. But I believe that's because we became a part of the place. And we were able to have very, uh, going back to communication, just having conversations. Mm -hmm. We had that dialogue going with the spirits. Nice. So it was, uh, it was very, a special type of investigation. So cool. did you um, end up making, having like a, this is, gonna, this, is I'm, this is the best way I can word this, like having a relationship with the spirits, like getting having dreams or information come to you, and you kind of like because I mean, you're there, yeah. you know. I mean, because usually when I go into a place and if I'm there long enough, like mm -hmm. I feel them and I can, like, they talk, you know, they talk to me, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I get and, you and I get like dreams from like basically yeah. like you know, dreams and stuff like that. I mean, did yeah, you no have dreams because I always left everything on the mountain, okay? I always, I always sever the, the yep. tie, mm -hmm. uh, so I never bring anything home. Uh, when I'm on the mountain, I totally open myself up. Yep. And that's, to get to your question, yes, um, when I enter the mind sometimes, I would feel that connection with yeah. some spirits. Mm -hmm. And I'd go in there alone a lot, by myself, no camera crews or oh, anything. Sure. Uh, one of the first things I did, <clears throat> after the miners told me about Tommyknockers, uh, little, they're, they're earth spirits, yes. elementals, mm -hmm. gnomes. Mm -hmm. um, and that you have to show respect to the Tommy now because if you show them respect, uh, they will keep you safe. So I did a little research and I, said, I saw that one of the uh, ways to respect the Tommy knockers was to make them an offering of whiskey. Oh. So I went to the store, bought a bottle of Jameson, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and just one night, just went in t deep into the mine. I just spoke to the spirits there. I said, yeah. okay, we're going to be here this during, just before season two. Mm -hmm. And I said, hey, we're back. Um, we're gonna be here for another three months, please keep us safe, blah, blah, blah. I just went through this whole spiel, said I brought this bottle for you, uh, just watch out for us, and I stuck it, hit it in the muck, and yeah. walked out. Did you, oh, so you didn't go back to like check it, see if it was still there? I mean, I don't think they're gonna take it. No. It's just, it's I, just I, as a I, sign I, of respect, Yeah, you know? I, I hit it, like, oh, really good, so no yeah. miners would find it, yeah. and stuff like that, and hey, free drink. Yeah, free right. <laughs> that's what the talking about, let's go! Right, 80-year-old booze, no. <laughs> No, but, but it was well hidden. I never went back to check on it just because it was just it was just like one of those offerings. Right, yeah. I mean, you don't need to, because, yeah, I'd be like, if I'm checking in on the present I give you, like, how do you like that present? Yeah, yeah. Like, that's kind of rude. <laughs> yeah. So, are we doing good? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, do you like it? No, right. we regifted it. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> we gave it to the fairies. Oh, uh, you would. <laughs> those guys. Yeah. Cool. Oh, gosh. I'm trying to... There's like all these questions I have that I just can't like think of them. Yes, because you're psychic me. I mean, I've been, I've been told that I have some psychic abilities, mm -hmm. but I, I never call myself that Well, way. we all do. Yeah, just, we all do. Yeah, yeah. I totally believe mm -hmm. that. But I have some really good friends that have just blown me away with stuff that they told me stuff that yeah. no one would ever know about. Oh, sure. And uh, I keep telling him some things. And he's going, yeah, you got something going on. Because you were talking about driving when I first walked in, and I oh. were in a certain state. Mm -hmm. 
a certain, a, a recent story, somewhat certain, mm -hmm. uh, recent. Um, I was in Vancouver, BC doing some work and I was just driving and I was coming to, up to a light and the two rows, I was gonna take a right-hand turn. So the two rows next to me were packed with traffic. Right. This was, my turn lane was pretty clear. Uh, light turns green, but I start slow. For no reason, I just slow yep. and I stop at the green light. As soon as I stop, a, a bicycle goes right in front of me. So if I kept going, I would have hit that bicycle and probably killed him. Right, right. And I just drove off and I was like, why did I stop? <laughs> Mm -hmm. And so it's like what you were kind of talking about. You're in a certain state when you're... You're just more and, aware, yeah. even though you're relaxed. Yeah, and in, Christ, in mm -hmm. Kristen, my partner, she talks about uh, driving, you're the hypnosis everyone goes through when you're driving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You could be driving down a stretch of road, and all of a sudden you're like, whoa. Yeah. You're like, you're, your brain basically just took over mm -hmm. for a while. Mm -hmm. You were hypnotized. Yeah, yep, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so... Now that the show is over, what are you doing now and what's your plan going forward? I live on the streets and I panhandle. <laughs> Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, I know, that's yeah. the way it is. Nick Nolte and me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, uh, I do a lot of writing now. Yep. Uh, I did a lot, a bunch of television. When I was in Vancouver, I did a lot of television shows. Mm -hmm. So you see me on uh, uh, The 100, Once Upon a Time, iZombie, Riverdale. And I did a bunch of little movies and stuff like that. I played some lead characters, and then doing a lot of writing, and like uh, screenplays or stories or mostly books. But I've done screenplays okay, as well. Sure, yeah. sure. Because uh, my husband and I are filmmakers, so that's why. I'm, okay. That's why yeah. that's on my brain. So yeah. done a couple of scripts mm -hmm. and got them out there too. Oh, so nice. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. Been doing a lot of that. Sweet. <laughs> but everything's kind of paranormal focused. Paranormal focus. Okay. Sure. You write what you know. Yes. <laughs> Yep, absolutely. Cause that's, yeah, you gotta write to your strengths yep. instead of trying to go for something that you're not comfortable with. Yeah, I love playing a zombie on iZombie. Mm -hmm. It was fun. Yeah. <laughs> Got to work with Robert Nepper, who's one of my <clears throat> acting heroes. He was on Prison Break and the show Heroes. He's on a bunch of stuff. Sweet. Now he's on iZombie. So. Very cool. <laughs> So do we want to wrap up with me telling you about the weird dreams? Yeah, please sure. do, because I'm okay. asking that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally forgot. I, I, I want to tell you about the weird dream. Here's the deal. I'm going to tell you what happened in the dream, because I normally don't have them like this clear and crisp and vivid, and that's why it's creeping me out. But what's creeping me out even more is how I researched it afterwards from a historical standpoint. Okay. So I'm going to tell you the dream. Okay. You tell me what you think it means, and okay. I'll tell you like the history. Okay. I like that. Okay. So I'm in this like weird giant gothic cathedral. I have never in my entire life, I'm Catholic for background, but I have never in my entire life had a dream before with religious imagery in it. I've never, I, I've never just, it's never happened. It's usually at home or at school is where, you, where my dreams take place. And uh, so it's in this big gothic cathedral. There's a bunch of people like family members, cousins, distant relations, stuff like that, all sitting around in the pews and stuff like that, and everyone is coming up for for communion. Except that in order to accept it, they're like getting down on their knees when they're taking the, commu the you know, Eucharist. Mm -hmm. And the Eucharist is like a pretzel. It's like a big crunchy thing instead of like a regular, if you know, host wafer, it's unleavened stuff. Uh, and so I'm walking up, I'm walk, like with the line of people doing this, and they're like getting down on their knees to do it. And I turn to the priest, and I'm just like, what is this? And he goes, this is the offering of St. Bartholomew. And then I woke up. Bartholomew? Bartholomew. Like Bartholomew or the Bartholomew, like a, like a donkey? Yeah. Like Bartholomew. A, Mule. Like a donkey. With an L. With an L, I think. <sighs> You're on a fine line here, because I don't know if this dude's real. <laughs> I think that he, that is absolutely research. a real saint, and I will tell yes. you all about it after okay. she. All right, cool. That's where is I'm he the guy that invented pretzels? <laughs> 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 no, but his his story is going to blow your mind once we get to it. But okay, let's hear what you got to say about it. Okay, how do? Okay, so first of all, how do you feel about church in general? And that and that church. I mean, because it was a Gothic cathedral, yep. so it was. Did it was it very old or was it very new? V very old. Okay, um, and then how did you feel about the the environment that you were in, like? Like emotional wise, or it seemed like weird, cold, distant, sterile, like like just not very personal. Yeah, like you it just didn't fit in. I felt like I was just like hovering, watching, rather than like participating. Okay, um, and then who who are the members in your family that were there? 
Uh, a whole bunch of the, the Rungis, who are cousins that uh, live in the small town where sure. we live. And uh, like a bunch of my like immediate family sure. and stuff like that. But they're all like scattered randomly throughout okay. the, the church. Okay. Um, so then how, who, like how, what's your relationship with these people that were at the church? Are they like, if it's fairly like, okay, I mean, are there a few people that you kind of like don't get along with? No, it's all, it's all people I get along Very with or like don't know well enough to be mad at. So, okay. And then the expectation of the host not being the host, but actually being a pretzel, like what type of pretzel? Well, it, I, it sounds silly, I mean, but it wasn't. It wasn't a pretzel. It was just like a pretzel, where so, it was just like a crunchy it, bread. Like yeah, where it was like bread. it was like bigger, and it had like bits of salt on the surface of it, but it was still kind of Eucharist. Yeah, that sounds really good. <laughs> <laughs> and thus, the greatest snack in American history was invented. Yeah. And then, and then, what did the priest say again? This is the offering of Saint Bartholomew. Okay, so. Just like no you're... googling it. No googling it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to like. I'm just trying to like kind of tune into it, kind of like kind of like just get a gist for. And for reference, I have never heard of the saint before, ever. And you like when he said that. What was your what was your reaction? Like, how did you feel about like? It was shock. It was like what? And then I woke up. Okay. Because he basically like. Turn to me dramatically, like you know. Everybody like, does that to you in your dreams, though. To get, and it's I think for, it's, for the past reference when she's like interpreted my dreams, people do that to me. They, it's it's like they always do like this dramatic head turn, and it's just like whoa, and they give you like some weird message, and you're just like, ah, and then you wake up. And I think it's, I'm a drunk, dump or a jumpy dreamer, I guess. Okay, so I think I don't feel like. Um, the church or that the people or anything had anything to do with anything. Okay. I think that that was a setup because it was some. It needed. There was something. I feel like there's honestly. I kind of feel like something was like reaching out to you and wanting to get your attention to bring your attention to this, to the saint, because I think that was the most significant thing because it needed to be normal enough for you to be like it's church. I'm with family because you would be going to church with family. It doesn't yep. have to be like any special occasion because you know. Yep. yep. Okay. I'm here. It's church. Whatever. But then. The fact that now the now the, whatever is reaching out to you is saying, okay, we're gonna mix it up a bit and we're gonna do communion time, which is a normal thing. However, it's gonna be different. This Eucharist is gonna be different, and to get your attention, because this is this is what you always go through. It's the priest saying something to you, and that's when you're waking up. Yeah. So now, as far as as far as the person in the dream and like what they're saying, like and, and the name. Um, I feel like it's it was significant enough for them to give that to you because you had to research it, and I think it was important that you knew about this. So, does that help? It makes the dream much more disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> but, but okay, That's what the research says. Okay, well then let's get the research and then we can finish out the rest okay. of it. Okay, so do me the re give it that. So Saint Bartholomew, for those of you who don't know, is one of the twelve apostles. He's not talked about very much in the Bible, but the most distinguishing thing about him is that he is always depicted in Renaissance art as legend has it that he was martyred by being flayed alive. And so in medieval paintings and sculptures at the Vatican, he is depicted as holding a carving knife and his own, like he looks normal, but he's holding like human skin and a face that is his and a carving knife. With his face? Yes. Like, creepy. Oh. Yeah, that's, that's when I'm like, <laughs> shit, I have a problem. <laughs> I don't think you do. I think you're fine. So, crazy saint that carries around his own, like, <clears throat> cut off skin. That's what happened to him. That's yeah, not was, who he, he is. Crazy. He didn't do it to himself. Yeah, he didn't do well, it to himself. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> And technically, the Renaissance painters put it in his own hands because I doubt he was carrying it around. Yeah, how could he carry his own face? And he has his face. Like, yeah. that makes no sense. But that's the whole point. Like, they're trying to paint. So it heals. But I mean, you yeah. check out the Renaissance artwork and it's, like, disturbing. Well, oh, yeah. A lot of Renaissance artwork is really disturbing. Yes. But I, I feel like something was reaching out to you to get your attention to talk about this saint and to talk about this apostle. And I think that there's more to it that you just haven't uncovered yet. 
Like I feel like there is like, like we maybe we need to do a podcast about this guy and do a deep dive. That there's possibly something else that we need to that's the bring thing. our it's attention be, to. Because he's not in the Bible and there's not a lot written about him. That's like the, that's the reason in the paintings and the sculptures that when they're like listing them all, they sure. have him do that because it's like the only thing that people in the Renaissance knew about him. Okay, now here's a couple other things. Um, usually um, within the Catholic Church, every saint has their day. Yep. What was his day? I don't know. Let's Google it. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, but uh, uh, but uh, he is the patron saint of I want to say like an island in Greece that okay. celebrates like a like a, a festival to him or something oh, like nice. that. Yeah, uh, and that yeah. was yeah that was the 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 biggest like distinguishing thing about us as far as his feast or festival or whatever. Which is that they they in the in the this like on this Greek island or wherever it is they carry around a, a sculpture of him through like the village oh, on nice. a certain day every sure, every year. Sure. So I wonder if that date has any significance and I wonder if um You can Google it. August August twenty fourth. August twenty fourth. What does that mean to you? Yeah. August twenty fifth <laughs> <laughs> What was the what was the last Monday of August? Oh, I don't remember. Oh, God, we're going to find out. If this lands on this, I'm going to be so creeped out. I'm going to like sleep with all the lights on tonight. You don't need to. You're fine. August 27th. Okay. But it's after the date, so. Yeah, close enough. Close enough. Are you kind of creeped so, out right now? I'm super creeped out. <laughs> I think you're will fine. You, will you escort will, me to my car? I will escort you to your car. <laughs> Thank you. I will say it's your well, car. You made it this long. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> I just think, yeah, I think something's just reaching out to you and trying to get your attention. And that can happen. Like, things can reach out to you. And it's just, it's just more random for people that aren't, you know. I just feel like this is really turning into an episode of uh, the No Sleep podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and that, like, a skinless guy is going to be waiting for me in my car. <laughs> There's no skin. That was what happened to him. It's yeah. not like he did it to himself. Like, yeah, he's, if, any, yeah. if anything, it's going to be the guys who skinned him. Yeah. Coming yeah. after you. Damn Romans. It's always the Romans. <laughs> yeah. Just blame them. Robert, I think your face carries the um, sins of your family because your face has become a martyr for them. Alcoholism? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, um, are we about time, or are we are we uh, wanting to do? I'm anything? hoping people are coming in to see me. I Wait. think I'm hoping you have a lot of people waiting. I do. Oh, you oh. and you. That's awesome. Okay. Right. Uh, then that's a well, wrap. Let's, let's keep up. Let's yep. use up more of his yeah, time. Keep up going. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool because I really don't have a whole show. I'm just doing uh, some crazy stunts. Yeah. So. Cool. Stunts, all right. They want to see some stunts. They right, do. Well, Breakaway right, well, tables we'll, and stuff. We'll wrap this up and we'll let them in. So this has cool. been um, a cop, my cop Grimoire, Chapter 16, Ghosts, with special guests. Did you say 18 when we started? No, I think I said 16. It's one of them. All right. Can we say 17 so it's in the middle? All right. It's editing. I will fix it. All right, cool. <laughs> so this has been... Macabre Grimoire chapter whatever with our special guest. I don't remember your name. I'm not telling you. <laughs> Is it Doyle something, right? No, Patrick. Patrick. There you go. Man. Yes! <laughs> Patrick Doyle. Hey, All right, thanks. thanks for listening, guys. Bye. Hey, you're thanks, the Come on, get my name. Yeah, <laughs> Macabre Grimoire is a production of the SiouxEmpire.com. Learn more at macabregrimoire.com.